Hello guys, Sunny here, SBG here and today we are gonna talk about Dragon Age Veil vale God Tips and Tricks, the absolute beginner guide that you will find very useful on your journey. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. First thing, I think what you should do in Dragon Age Veil vale God is adjust your settings. The default setting works pretty good, there isn't much to adjust here but I would still recommend to update the object glint visibility to always and I think distance should be as far as possible. I believe I IGN had supported these settings but uh, I have tested them it doesn't make much of a difference but it is definitely better than the default one so what it does is basically all the stuff that you are exploring while you are on a quest they are they will be much more visible to you than the default setting so I would suggest that if you don't want to miss on anything because this game is full of loot there is a lot of loot everywhere and there is breakable stuff there is unbreakable stuff so I would highly recommend this setting to you guys next comes different difficulty now i would highly suggest to play it on nightmare but the only problem with playing on nightmare is that you cannot change the difficulty afterwards and you are logged in into that difficulty so nightmare is the hardest difficulty and why i recommend is because i played this game on the second highest difficulty which is just below nightmare so that i didn't want to lock myself into the hardest difficulty should i encounter any difficult enemy or any difficult enemies group but i found the game to be very easy on underdog once i mastered its combat actually we will talk about the combat tips and tech tricks but i would highly uh, re uh, suggest to play it on nightmare if difficulty is not a problem with you and you enjoy a challenge but if it is a problem with you then i would suggest to play it at least on underdog and this will actually make your combat interesting your enemy encounter fun because you will always be on your toes on thinking how to beat some enemies and even then you may get you may stumble upon some gear that may look every encounter look very easy once you get a hang of the combat so highly suggest like a nightmare but go for underdog so that's my recommendation next comes the character builder the dragon age whale guard has a pretty good character builder I, I i'm pretty sure you must have seen a lot of videos online uh, on how great the character and its hair and the character's hair look uh, it's pretty good in character builder i'm gonna talk about the things that you can pick for example the lineage whether you can be an elf or a dwarf for a human i would say pick any to your liking i didn't see any disadvantage in picking any uh, class i went with a dwarf i just wanted it to be a fun but i think the character rook which is by default named as rook is a pretty good character the the voice acting is done good on that character and i overall it's a very very good character so i don't think lineage affects much but it, it's up to you you play as whatever you like uh, next comes class um, i played as a warrior there are three classes warrior mage and rogue i played as warrior but i uh, researched online i talked to many of my friends who have played this game and i feel rogue is the best class to pick and the most fun to play with so this is my recommendation to play as rogue but you will not go wrong in dragon age will guard with any class because i have heard it's just a matter of a slight difference other classes are pretty good too the warrior class is pretty good i played as warrior it was good it was a very fun experience the mage and uh, rogue are in fact if not even better than the warrior class so you will not go wrong with it my recommendation would be to go to go and pick the rogue class now comes the faction so factions are like you want to play you will have a backstory if you pick a faction for example i played as a grey warden and i had a backstory where i went against my captain in some village order and i saved the village from dark spawn but i went against my uh, captain's order so there is a little bit of backstory which will come into play into some rpg decision making in this game at least it came for me while i was playing as the warrior in one of the quests uh, that i was in into the game but uh, I would say pick what you like the most. I I heard that and even crows and lords of fortune out, outfits are very are very good to start with, and you get that outfit once you pick your faction. So that is just one tip to start you by. But you will not go wrong with any faction. It's just fun to play with different factions and fact. So I picked Grey Warden. Uh, it was okay. It was not great. It was not bad either. But um, if I were to do it again, I would either go with lords of fortune or even crow just for that uh, beautiful outfit they have the uh, other thing that you can change in your character screen before starting your game is the inquisitor from the dragon age inquisition game i would 
without spoiling much i would highly suggest making changes into this into how your relationship with solus is Uh, for that inquisitor because you can actually in- change how your inquisitor behaves with solus and things like that and it impacts the ending of the game and without spoiling much i would highly suggest you make changes in for your inquisitor now uh, once you start the game you will be thrown into one of the um, cities and you will start as the uh, as one of the main you will start in one of the main quests now when you are on a main quest there are inaccessible areas while you are uh, roaming around in the city for doing the main quest initially it will happen that the areas will be inaccessible either the either, either the areas are locked because you haven't further progressed into the story or uh, every companion has some ability to unlock you know has the ability uh, to unlock some areas in the game which uh, you will only be able to do so once you have got all the companions in the game after doing further side quests so w- highly i would highly recommend that when you start on a main quest and you get to a new city explore it to the point that it doesn't become frustrating that the area is inaccessible or the chest is not lootable you can always come back into these main areas and explore it uh, with your companion other tip that i have while exploring is when you are passing through a area in while doing a quest and there is a chest nearby the mini map will blink and it will also make a blink um, it will also make a sound uh, to let you know that there is a chest nearby it doesn't mean that it will be accessible for you to loot it is possible that the chest is also inaccessible behind a companion ability to unlock that area or the area itself is not unlocked because you haven't pro- progressed further in the main story so just to just to keep an eye on the mini map and at least know that there is a chest nearby but once you pass it near enough for it to show on the map it will stay on the map so that is one good thing about dragon age wildgard there is a lot of quality of feature in uh, things like this if you are able to pass through through an area where you are not able to get to the chest but you are very near enough to the chest it will stay on the map and you can always come back and loot that uh, chest later on talking about the chests there are two types of chest one is weapon based with one contains weapons and other contains amul- uh, other uh, Uh, equipments like amulet uh, armor and things like that and uh, most the the chests that contain weapon armor are actually marked and are actually also showed on the map as well but there are sm- small there may be small chests which contain rings amulets other equipment that uh, that your character can wear those might not be visible on the on the map those you will only be able to loot by exploring the area so i would highly suggest this game is actually has a lot of stuff to loot and there are a lot of areas to nook around and to go into and you know loot stuff uh, like rings things and whatever not so i would highly suggest that you explore the areas as much as possible but also not to the point that uh, you are beating around the bush uh, around an inaccessible area and you only to find it that it will be unlocked later so explore as much as you can and then uh, come back if you are not able to get to certain uh, stuff and talking about the quests uh, the main quests may take you to certain areas which uh, the big cities like minrathas and uh, and the other cities that are shown in the trailer are accessible even after doing the main quest but there will be some areas that will occasionally appear on the map just for a main quest or a side quest or any quest that you are doing and you will not be able to go back to those quests and you you will not be able to go back to those areas sorry and if you are not able to go back to those areas you will get to know about it because these will pop up on your map and you will be able to travel only when that quest is active or when that quest is possible to do so i would highly suggest that when you go through those areas i i would like to call them as mission areas with respect to the other main city areas these areas i would highly recommend you to explore as much as possible because there is no coming back to these areas there are only areas that were there for just for one mission and you will not be able to go back and if you miss some uh, loot over there then it's lost but good thing is there is no platinum link to collecting stuff so if you are a platinum hunter um, you don't uh, really oh, have to have a headache right. if you lose something while on a mission which doesn't let you go How back you to that area shot? let's jump into combat for this game the combat is pretty fun actually once you get a hang of it there it, it is based on priming and detonation but to start with basics i would say there are three types of actually there are four types of attacks one is light attack heavy attack charged attack and you have a ranged attack 
um, I can do an in-depth video on combat. This is not an in-depth video on combat. So let me know in the comments if you would like a in-depth uh, combat guide for Dragon Age Railguard. But without diving into too much details, there will be different enemies uh, which will have barriers on them. Like blue barrier is a is just a blue barrier which is actually which you can uh, destroy using the ranged attacks there will be enemies with yellow bar which which means they have armor and armor can be destroyed with heavy attacks and then there is uh, another armor called blighted armor which is in orange color and that is actually damaged through the charged attacks charged light or charged heavy attacks so charged attacks for orange heavy attacks for yellow and ranged attacks for blue bar over enemies i would say when you start a combat that focus on uh, the ranged enemies first because they will uh, they will snipe you if you don't they will always have a, you know target on your head where they will be shooting on you while you're fighting bigger enemies so i would suggest to focus on range enemies then focus on other smaller enemies then because this game throws a lot of enemies at you in hordes and there will be big enemies as well so i would say target them last but focus on the ranged ones first because they are the most annoying of the bunch with combat and quests that you will do you will gain xp in it and you will with xp you will spend them on skills dragon age whale guard has a very very big but very rewarding skill tree and there are three specializations for every class i played as warrior warrior has reaper special uh, champion and i think one is for damage output so three specializations are there for every class even for mage and rogue you will gain xp and through quests and you will spend those xps in these skill trees and uh, you can activate new skills using these there there will be passive skills and there will be active skills these active skills can be classified into two types one that apply or detonate an effect and one that do not the whole combat of dragon age whale guard is around priming uh, an enemy for uh, with an effect and then detonating it with another effect it's an old uh, combat technique that was used in mass effect if i remember correctly and they just brought it here and in a much better and much uh, qualitative way every class can apply two effects and they can detonate one for example for warrior class uh, it can detonate weakened but can apply sundered and overwhelmed i think these effects can also they also have some effects on the enemies for example if i remember correctly sundered primes the enemy for armor damage overwhelmed actually stuns the enemies and weakened actually primes the enemies for more damage so there are benefits of these and the biggest tip that i would like to give is you would have a meter of some sort for warriors it was rage meter so you would develop rage and you will use rage to activate these uh, skills in the combat while you are in uh, in an active combat so i would suggest that you focus on applying the effects and using your companions for detonating the effect the reason being that if you are able to apply two effects you can use two component two companions to detonate that effect and it is far easier for you to generate the rage or whatever it is in case of mage and rogue to apply that uh, particular effect so you can quickly generate rage and quickly apply two effects like sundered and overwhelmed on an enemy and then you can trigger detonations from your companions and you can trigger two detonations uh, immediately as soon as you start enter into the combat other than that you can um, pick any companions you want but i would suggest that you pick companions based on the abilities that you have you apply two abilities so pick the companions that can detonate those two abilities and therefore rogue and mage goes well with warrior and similarly if you pick rogue you you apply the abilities that rogue applies then uh, mage and warrior goes well well with that class the weapons and armor and equipment how we find them is through chests but or even uh, we can buy them from the vendors in uh, spread throughout the cities but the way these uh, upgrades work is a little bit different in dragon age whale guard so there are two things one is the class level upgrade for a weapon for example a weapon can go from common to rare to epic and then to legendary class and that the upgrade works in dragon age whale guard is by finding a duplicate for that weapon so let's say you start with a weapon in an epic class let's say it's uh, a purple weapon now you want to upgrade that 
class uh -huh. to legendary now you will have to find a duplicate of that weapon to upgrade it to legendary the duplicate can be found in any of the chests that you explore in the areas or in the cities that you are in or, or you can buy it from the vendors in a particular city that uh, you are in so there are two ways to get the duplicate of that weapon getting it from the vendor is obviously much less time consuming but it requires more uh, management on your resources other than that there are stats on the weapons like how much damage it will do or there is some special effect on that weapon applies for how much duration it applies those are those stats are upgraded by the blacksmith of the game which is also the caretaker that you would have seen in the trailers of the game which is also present at the hub of the uh, dragon age whale guard so this works a little bit different but it 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 works pretty well because uh, your exploration becomes a little bit more rewarding i would say in this case uh, because you may f you will have to find like at least uh, if you like a weapon and it is at let's say common or uncommon class then you will have to find at least four weapons of the same type to upgrade it to legendary so this is how the upgrades class upgrades and stat upgrades work in com in in uh, dragon age will guard for weapons and armor now talking about the gameplay the gameplay loop is uh, pretty much the same that any action rpg has what you will do is you will complete a main quest then you will go to the hub then you'll talk to a uh, blacksmith upgrade your uh, uh, upgrade your stats for weapons armor and what not you're wearing and then you will uh, open the map and map will show you if there are companions who want to talk to you they'll have their own chamber and things like that I'll let you explore rather than telling you about it but there will be exclamation marks drawn on the companion's head where some are will be timed uh, there will be a timed dialogue which means that your companion has dialogue which will fire in some time so you better go and talk first then there are yellow uh, dialogue icons with an exclamation mark which means if you talk to that companion you will give a, you will get a side quest from them and then there is an exclamation mark icon uh, which is not included in a dialogue but just an exclamation mark I, I can display it on the on your companions which means that they if you talk to them you will initiate they'll give you a side so these are the different kind of i would say annotations that are put on your companions when you are at the hub you can go to the hub talk to them and then you can be off to your uh, next quest now good thing about this game is you will talk a lot there will be a lot of you'll talk a lot with the characters in this game because there are a lot of characters in this game so good thing is that there will be there will be a time when you will have to decide something there will be decisions like any in any other dragon age game but the good thing is and one of the best quality of life features that this game has to offer is its save uh, system and it is pretty good so they will have auto saves already for this game apart from the auto save you can do manual saves and apart from the manual save they will also have temporary decision save as they call it which means that you uh, whenever you take a very important decision in the game it will be auto saved at, at that point the game will auto save the game for you and it will be under the uh, temporary decision save you can always go back reload the game at that point and change your decision that is actually one of the best things that i have seen in this game but i would highly suggest to still if you if you are under a dilemma of uh, if you want to pick multiple choices when you're presented with a decision i would still recommend you go and do a manual save uh, before you pick any decision so that you can uh, go back and choose all the decisions that you want because while game does a very good job in keeping all the temporary decision saves for you it, it doesn't do it for all of them the next important tip that i have is you can romance everyone in this game but only up to a certain point and do, do not need to worry about about it without spoiling much but you will get a very very fair warning that you are going to commit to this particular companion and it will lock you out from the other companions so you are safe to do whatever you want till that warning you can romance you you will get occasionally get romance options from everybody and you can safely romance with them until that warning now you will have to do quests now the best way i have found out the best order to do quest is to first focus on companion quests because those are missable and i did miss a couple of them in my first playthrough after a very big uh, 
uh, decision that I made in the game and I lost some of the quests some of the companion quests but side quests were I think still available but I would highly highly recommend to focus on companion quests at, as they become available the game has three categories main quests companion quests and side quests the main quests are the main quests you need to do them last if you're a kind of a completionist kind of a guy so I would suggest to do them last focus on companion quests as they become available then focus on side quests and then do the main quest so that should be your order of quests in this game and it is possible that when on your side quests you are pretty much underpowered under leveled for that particular side quest while the side quest doesn't have a level marking on it but when enemies do show their level and i think you will see a red skull next to the enemy when when they are overpowered with respect to your current level so i would suggest you backtrack to that side quest later when you are feeling overwhelmed by the enemy level they are not they do not appear according to your level you can get a, a side quest which is meant for much later in the game but you are trying to do that side quest and getting beaten by the enemies left and right. So I would highly suggest to check that icon against the enemies and then come back if required. The last but not the least tip that I would like to say is this game has a lot of exploration to be done and apart from weapons and armors you will gain uh, loot by breaking stuff while on exploration. There are breakable boxes and things like that. There are other resources from chests that you will get to upgrade your weapons to upgrade their start to upgrade their stats the stats upgrade happens through these resources and these resources are up available for looting while you are doing your exploring stuff there are resources which are used for upgrades and there are resources which can be sold to merchants these resources give you different value when you sell them to a different vendor for example if you are selling a particular item to a vendor in minrathas will give you a different price but if that particular item you sell it to a different city vendor it might fetch you a different price so realizing that can actually help you in maintaining more cash and more gold for you and buying more stuff at the end of the day for your weapons and for your armors and that's it guys these are all my top of the mind tips and tricks that will help you begin your uh, dragon age journey let me know if you find anything that i missed out or if you want me to go in depth on any of these for my future video so till then guys bye bye take a look please like and subscribe subscribe to my channel and talk to you later.